Rewire your beliefs, rewire your self-image, rewire your financial set point, rewire your expectations, rewire the identity that's causing the behavior to stay consistent with the identity. All right, can you rewire your brain for wealth? First and foremost, is your brain even wired for wealth, for income, for debt? What do you think? Can you rewire your brain for wealth? Leave me a comment right now below. I'm gonna share with you uh, a whole bunch of ideas and some thoughts and some research on rewiring your brain for wealth. Do you believe, here's a question for you. First and foremost, do you believe that you are wired to earn a certain amount of income, to have a certain amount of wealth? Let me know in the chat if you believe yes, I am wired for a certain amount of income. Is it possible that just like a thermostat has a certain setting, depending on what you've programmed into the thermostat, is it possible that you and I also have a wealth thermostat, a financial set point? What do you think? Is that possible? Yes or no? All right. What do you think? When we think about our brain and wealth, were you born with the, the, the belief, the skills, the knowledge, the awareness of how much you could earn and how much wealth you could accumulate? Were you born with any neural patterns at all? Think about it. Ever wellness, you can change it? Yeah, can you change the neural patterns? Is it possible that from the time you know, we were born, we started to believe how much we could earn, how much wealth is normal for us based on our parents, our, our teachers, uh, our uh, school that we went to, our friends that we hung around with, the experiences that we had, the results that we achieved. Is it possible that while our young brains were getting formulated, like I remember, you know, being a kid, you know, and people talking about being a doctor or a lawyer. And, you know, that was uh, a long, long time ago, but a doctor or a lawyer, an engineer. And people said, if you're a doctor or a lawyer, or engineer back then, you can make 50 to $75,000 a year. And we were like, oh my God, 50 to $75,000 a year. That was three to four times more money than my father made as a cab driver. And so we thought, oh my God, a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer. What if I became that? And some kids were smart enough to do that in school and other kids like me didn't do well in school. So I thought, oh, well, what am I going to do? I'm not smart enough to earn that amount of money. I equated, maybe, maybe you did as well. I equated school and education with how much income and wealth I could accumulate. Anybody else other than me have that, you know, belief when you were a kid, right? And uh, I thought I would never amount to much because I didn't do well in school. I left school in grade 11. So I want to ask you a question, you know, to get you to think, right? Every Tuesday morning, I do these sessions at nine o'clock Pacific time, which is now. And part of this is to teach you, to share with you what I've discovered over 40 years of being in the personal development space, meaning as a student, right? But now as a teacher and a writer and author, and um, when we talk about rewiring your brain for wealth, why do we even use the word rewire? our brain for wealth. Like it has to assume that our brain is wired for wealth, right? What does that even mean? So when we talk about rewiring your brain for wealth, it assumes that there is a wiring already there. And the question then becomes, was the wiring there when you and I were born? Were we born with any beliefs? Were we born with an identity? Were we born with a self-image or even a self-concept? Were we born with any attitudes? Were we born with any habits? Were we born with any expectations? Were we born with any financial set points or limitations, right? Financial glass ceilings? And the answer is no. There, was, there, was, there were brain cells, a hundred billion of them or so, and 
over the course of our lifetime, right, uh, each one of those brain cells created neural connections, about 10,000 neural connections per cell. So if you want to do some math, do 100 billion times 10,000, huge number. And those connections started to formulate our perspective, our beliefs, our paradigm, our attitude, our skills, our expectations, our set points, right? So let's understand the nature of how our brain became conditioned, what the essence of this wiring is. So what happens is as we, you know, are born into this environment with parents with certain skills, certain knowledge, um, certain awarenesses, um, etc., we also have to assume that we apply or we, we learn the stuff from them about what's real and what isn't, right? We learned everything from our environment, our parents, the meaning we gave things. We learned that if we went to school, it means this. If we didn't, it means that. It means that this job earns that, etc. So we were born with a complete open slate, right? And then we created these neural patterns. And then those neural patterns went from creation initially to being what we call is soft wired soft wire, which means the neurons that formulated these connections through effort and awareness and the meanings we gave things became soft wired, not just in the conscious mind so we could declare the things that we may believe, but through our habits and our paradigms and our attitude and also the beliefs that we have about what's possible, you know, for us. Right, so when we're talking about rewiring your brain for wealth, is it possible that let's say if you, if you make, whether it's $1,000 a month or $1,000 a day, it doesn't matter, that the more you've been earning that amount of money, that becomes your financial or wealth set point. The more we reinforce a pattern, does it not mean that the pattern then reinforces itself through automaticity, which is one of the brain's ways to conserve energy, right? There's neuroplasticity, our brain's ability to make connections. There's neurogenesis, which is our brain's ability to create new neurons, which we once thought wasn't happening, but it does. But then automaticity is once those neuron patterns are formulated, they run automatically. It's part of something called your default mode network, okay? So think about this for just a moment. So in our brain, you know, we have these cells that have these neural connections that are easy for our brain to fire off based on automaticity and the neurons that fired together wired together. And the neurons that wired together are what we call our soft wired neuron patterns, right? So uh, here are a few questions. I want you to imagine a thermostat, right? You're in a room and I'm gonna ask Andrea to actually turn on my air conditioning right now because it's too hot in the room I'm in right now, right? So is it possible that once your thermostat is set in the room you're in, in the car you're in, in the hotel, it doesn't make a difference. Once the thermostat is set, Let's understand something called a psycho or a cybernetic mechanism. Cybernetic mechanism. I'm gonna teach you some of the principles to understand about your own brain and we'll talk about you know, rewiring your brain. Okay, I'll talk, teach you a little, uh, little um, process for refiring to rewire your brain. So if you put the temperature in a room or in a car to let's say 23 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Now there's a thermostat there's electrical wiring, right, that attaches to the thermostat. If hot air comes into the room, a signal is sent to the thermostat or through the thermostat to the furnace or the air conditioner, right? So if hot air comes in the room, the air conditioner goes on, blows cold air into the room, and the thermostat, right, starts to do what? Starts to calibrate based on the temperature in the room. So there's a sensor on the thermostat. 
That's called a cybernetic mechanism, a control and response mechanism that occurs in animals and some machines that we created, like guidance missile systems, like um, you know, like thermostats, like guidance mis a guidance system in an airplane or a boat, etc. So anytime there's a deviation, there's too much hot air or too much cold air, the system calibrates until the set point is reached. Does that make fundamental sense? Okay. Well, are you aware that you and I have a financial set point, a wealth set point, a fat set point in our brain? We have a relationship set point. We have a career set point, a business set point. So what creates this set point? And the answer is repetition of a pattern reinforces the pattern and then the pattern reinforces itself. So we create these comfort zones and then our brain does everything possible to maintain these comfort zones, even though we may not want it, it maintains a comfort zone because it conserves energy. Does that make sense? So for some of us, you know, for some people, not many, you know, we're wired to believe we can earn however much money we want. We upgrade our knowledge, we upgrade our skills, we uh, manage our emotions, right? We develop the strategies of what to do to achieve the income that we want. For others, the income that they want and the wealth they want, that's a, something they hope and dream about, but they don't fully integrate the beliefs required to achieve that. And there's two different types of beliefs. There's beliefs that you can declare, right? That's called a declarative belief, but there's also something called non-declarative beliefs. And these are your subconscious beliefs. So think about this. If you declare that you want to double your income, but there's another hidden belief that says, but you don't have the skills. You're not smart enough. You're not good enough. You didn't go to school. You're too young. You're too old. Whatever the counter belief is, can you understand how from a neurological and biological perspective, if there isn't coherence between the goal and the beliefs, for example, there's going to be chaos or procrastination or self-sabotage that happens. Does that make sense? So how do we rewire our beliefs? How do we rewire our habits, right? Because what are habits? Habits are a coalesced set of thoughts, emotions, feelings, sensations, and behaviors that operate automatically without us thinking about it. So why does our brain create habits? To conserve energy. <clears throat> why does our brain create habits? To be able to maintain comfort zones. Habits are to maintain comfort zones and homeostasis. Our brain is consistently looking to use its energy to maintain comfort zones. Our brain makes 100% certain that our outside world of results matches the internal map of reality, which is our paradigm, our beliefs, our habits, our expectations. Is it possible to want to double or triple your income or wealth, but you secretly expect not to? Is it possible that that might be happening? Is it possible that you have, you know, one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake because there isn't coherence in your brain? What's coherence? Coherence is harmony, right? If you were listening to a band or, a, or an orchestra, uh, you'd want them to be in harmony where it just flows. And if they weren't in flow or in harmony, it would sound awful, right? Well, when we have opposing beliefs, when we have um, habits that want us to do this, but requirement for doubling or tripling our income or wealth requires that, there's going to be an internal battle, right? So does that make sense? So fundamentally, if it makes sense, I'm going to give you a couple of things that you could be doing to rewire your brain for wealth. And I'm going to give you a real life example of what I did back in 1992, I believe. I want you to imagine this. Your brain is conditioned 
to do the same things almost over and over and over again. Yes, you can dream, you can imagine, you can hope and pray and want and wish. Uh, but to change behavior, you have to understand the science of habits, you know, right? The habits of thinking, the habits of, uh, of being, the habits of taking action or not taking action, which is a behavior. So in 1992, my company was stuck at 1.2 billion a year in sales. A lot of sales, I get it, but we were stuck. We knew that there was more we could do. And so I invited 75 of my real estate agents. I was a CEO and founder of Remax of Indiana. And um, I opened up a whole bunch of Remax franchised offices and we recruited a whole bunch of agents and those agents sold homes. We were selling, you know, 20, 25,000 uh, homes a year at our peak. And we were stuck at 1.2 billion a year in sales. And the average agent was doing okay, but we knew that there was room for growth. And even though we were doing a lot of training on how to sell, how to market, you know, how to take care of clients, how to run your little business, um, our agents and brokers got stuck. And the question was, why were they stuck? And it dawned on me that they're stuck the same reason I would get stuck is we have these set points. We have these wired patterns in our brain that just run the show automatically. And even though we want more, we were stuck. So I asked a bunch of agents, hey, does anybody here want to learn how to rewire their brains for greater uh, financial success and wealth? And a whole bunch of people said yes. And then I said, great, well, let's do a little experiment for six months. Let's take some time to rewire your beliefs, rewire your self-image, rewire your financial set point, rewire your expectations, rewire the identity that's causing the behavior to stay consistent with the identity. And so each of them paid, there were 75 agents that paid $3,000 each to work for six months on rewiring their brain, not to learn any new skills, okay? And every day, uh, be before every day, the first thing we did is we asked each one of the agents to write out the vision of what they would love their life to be like. And so they wrote, you know, you know, I'd love to travel the world, love to buy real estate as investments, would love to retire my parents, would love to go, you know, and help the charities in our local neighborhood, would like to put money away for our retirement and money away for our children's college education and to have a nice wardrobe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they wrote out a vision of what they wanted their life to be, part one. Part two, we said, okay, Let's create some goals, okay, for one year from now, six months from now, three months from now, one month from now. So we took the time, okay, to create some goals. Then we said, okay, what would you need to believe in order to make all of those things a reality? And they wrote out their beliefs. Then we said, okay, what would your financial set point need to be in order to earn the income, okay, that you need to earn in order to live that lifestyle? And we started to write down the beliefs, the habits, the perspectives, the attitude, the knowledge and the skills that they would need. We wrote all of this down. Now, here's where it gets to because that is an exercise that... I call, we use our, you know, Einstein brain to say, okay, here's what I could do. Here's what I need to believe. Here's the habits that I want. Does this make sense so far? And then we said, okay, every morning, every morning for six months, 180 days, basically, okay, you are going to sit down and you are going to look at your vision and you are going to visualize in your mind, because visualization is simulation, you are going to visualize actually achieving that life, achieving those goals, feeling how it's going to feel, okay, to help so many people because you've doubled or tripled your income. You're going to imagine where you are and you're gonna imagine a stair step all the way to your goal and you're going to emotionalize it every day. You are going to take the beliefs that you wrote and you are going to read them every day and you're going to run your fingers like I used to when I was 19 years old with your right hand, with your left hand. So you send a signal through your nervous system to your brain to wire those neurons together. So not only are you going to read it and see it with your eyes, 
You're gonna imagine it and use the occipital lobe. You're gonna use your fingers, okay, to run it across the words. You are gonna feel it so you activate the limbic system in the brain, the emotional center in the brain. And then, after you do that for 10 or 15 minutes, you are going to take three simple action steps that day that'll help you double or triple your income. So every single day, they did that, all right? Visualize, emotionalize, run their fingers across this, really feel the new you. And you are gonna take three small action steps towards achieving that goal. We didn't teach them anything else about marketing or selling or doing anything, nothing else. And you know what happened over six months? We tracked this, this group, there were 75 real estate agents, we tracked this group for six months, but we also took a look at their results the year before for that same period. And that 75 group increased sales, can anybody guess by how much? They increased sales by 100 million dollars, 100 million dollars, more than the year before at that same time. Now, 100 million dollars times 6% commissions, okay, is 6 million extra dollars, 6 million extra dollars, there were 75 agents in the group, even at a 50-50 split, that was three million extra dollars for them to split. Why? Because every day they did something called cognitive priming. What does that mean? Well, it means that every day they gave their brain the instruction of what to focus on. Every day they activated that emotional center in their brain and what is emotion, it's energy in motion. Every day they read the affirmations, they felt the affirmations, and they started to create new neural patterns in their brain that they reinforced for 180 days. And what started to happen was they started to believe that they could earn more. What started to happen is they started to feel a change from within. What started to happen was they started to act in alignment with the vision. They started to act in alignment with the new identity. They changed their perspective of what's possible. They changed their expectations of what's possible. They recalibrated and reset their set points from the inside out so that the outside results matched what they had written on the paper, their goals, their vision. We, in essence, reverse engineered from the vision and the goals to the behaviors, to the beliefs, to the emotions, to the skills, to the strategies. And then we reinforced a new pattern that overrode the old patterns. And these agents went on to make an extra 25,000, 50,000, 100,000, and then many of them went on to make 250, 500,000, a million dollars a year after that. Why? Because when you reset the software, right, the coding, the conditioning, the behavior must follow. Pay close attention to what I'm about to share. I want you to imagine lottery winners, just for a moment, okay? Out of 100 people who win the lottery, 5 million, 10 million, 50 million or so, out of 100 people who win the lottery, how many do you think lose the money within three to five years? How many of the 100 do you think lose the money within three to five years? Give me a number, type it in. All right, how many of you think lose the money within three to five years? They buy the tickets, they win the lottery, they are like set for life, many of them. How many do you believe lose all the money? The answer is around 85 to 
to 90 is what I have read. 85 to 90 people who are set for life lose the money. Why? Like, doesn't that blow you away? Like, why? It wouldn't be you, right? It wouldn't be you. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be you. you. You'd not be one of those, you know, 85. Here is the reason why. One of the responsibilities of our brain is to make sure that our external world of results, your body, your physique, your fat, your weight, your relationship, your business, your income, your wealth, what our brain does is make 100% certain that your outside world of results matches the internal map of reality and expectations. So if you expect to be poor, if you expect it to be hard, if you expect to not know what to do, if you expect anything, your brain makes that a reality. If you believe that you're not smart enough, not worthy enough, not good enough, not this enough or that enough, your brain makes sure of that reality. If your external world doesn't match the internal world, the internal world creates a pattern of self-sabotage a pattern of disassociative thinking. You disassociate from the external result until there's a match on the inside and the outside. If you wanna understand why many people who achieve success abuse drugs or alcohol as they're trying to reconcile the results of what they're seeing out there with maybe the accolades of what they're getting and their internal self-image, self-worth, etc. Does that make sense? So as you are upgrading your knowledge, as you're upgrading your skills, um, as you're upgrading your beliefs and your habits, you have to upgrade your self-image and your self-worth neural pattern to match the success that you want to achieve. Because if you don't work on the rewiring and recalibration of all of these together, so that the inner game matches the outer game, chances are you may do a lot of rationalizing which means you will do a lot of rational lies-ing, right? You'll tell yourself a lot of rational lies. You'll do a lot of procrastination. You'll self-sabotage. You'll achieve some success, and then you'll sabotage. You'll achieve a little bit more success, and then sabotage, and then you will, what? Reinforce a disempowering self-image pattern. So, does that make sense? Does that make sense? So how do you rewire your brain for wealth? Every day you follow what I said. And if you want to do it using, you know, some software and some evidence-based methodologies, join me for the Brainathon. I'll show you some more techniques and tools with me and other brain experts. I'll also introduce you to uh, one of our flagship programs called Winning the Game of Money, which is a brain training program and a coaching program for those of you who want to go deeper. Either way, there's lots to learn. And uh, if you enjoyed this, would you mind sharing this? Give me a like or a love, a comment, and uh, give me some feedback. Here's the thing I want you to consider, right? We have this incredible $100 billion brain. Many of us never got the user's manual for how do we train it? How do we train our own brain? Is it possible that you know, our brain has these neuro muscles? Neuro muscles, is it possible that um, some muscles are weak and some are strong. Is it possible that some are empowering us, some are disempowering us? Is it possible that some are positive, some are negative, some are constructive, some are destructive? Is it possible some of our patterns uh, don't serve us? And the answer is of course yes. Well, is it also possible that you can rewire your brain for wealth? The answer is yes. Hey, this is John and if you liked that video, Watch the next video because it is packed with things that you can do right now to achieve success way faster than ever before.